In this final lesson, we're going to finish up our final details and then talk about the assignment for this level. All right, so let's come in and let's create a couple of primitives for our buttons here. So we're just going to come in and grab a cylinder. And I'm going to go to my front view. And I'm going to turn on auto grid. I'm going to create the cylinder right here okay, on my surface. And it should orient to that surface pretty well. And then we're going to finalize that. And let's go ahead and hit Z to zoom in on that object. Frame that. And let's take our sides down to 1 and then our eight, our sides down to uh, something like 8 or so. Well, let's do 12. 12 should give us a good value there. So with this, uh, what I want to do is I want to convert it to editable poly. And let's go to polygon mode. I'm going to get rid of the polygon that's on the back. Hit delete. And then I'm going to take this front polygon. I'm going to scale it down. Now let's make sure that this is set to local and scale it along the X and Y. And then I'm also going to push that in. Let's make sure that is set to local as well. So let's push it in the X, or I'm sorry, the Z. And then here I'm going to inset. And I'm going to inset that amount quite a bit. And then we're going to pull that out a little bit more. Now what I'm trying to do is try to create a rounded uh, look for this. Okay, so that looks good. And then uh, from here, I'm going to inset one more time, but let's make it pretty small. And we'll hit OK. Now I'm going to select this edge, hold down Shift, and select the next one in line. That should select that loop. And then we'll extrude that down okay, into a negative direction. All right, so that looks great. Finally, uh, we normally want to take care of our topology on these objects. So I'm going to select these two vertices. Let's connect those. And then we're going to right click and cut the rest of these. So we'll go from here across to here. We'll go from here down and then from here down. Okay, just making sure that we're creating co uh, quads all the way through that. And then I'm going to go to edge mode. I'm going to double click on these edges on the outside of all these. Now we may have to come in because it didn't look like we wanted to select all of those vertices. So, or all those edges for that loop. So what we want to do is we want to check to see if we have any overlapping vertices. A quick way to do this is to um, select everything and hit weld and then uh, set your threshold to something like 0.1 and usually that will take care of any vertices that are on top of one another. Another way to manually check for this to absolutely make sure is by hitting X on the keyboard and this is going to bring up our search and this will allow us to search for a specific action. This is called X view. So I'm going to type in X view and you'll see it comes up with cycle forward and backward. Let's click on that and it's going to bring up a UI on our viewport. Let's click on this first line and switch this to overlapping vertices. If we have our object selected, we hit update, it'll highlight the one that is overlapping. And as you can see here, we've got a vertex that's overlapping. So if I select around that, you see that two vertices are selected, and I can hit weld. There we go. Now let's go ahead and go to edge mode. And let's double click on all these edges and go all the way around. Okay, once we have that, let's chamfer that. And we want to do just a little bit. Okay, we don't want to do too much. And then we'll hit OK. Okay, so we have our first button. And what I want to do is I just want to push that into uh, the surface here. May have to modify the rotation of that a little bit. You might want to turn off your angle snap. But that should be pretty close. Let me change that to color. Oops, not render. Change its color and then apply that material. Let's also change its smoothing groups while we're here. So we're going to switch everything over just to one smoothing group for right now. We'll clear all. Set that to one. Should give us a nice result. Let's grab our move tool and we could go ahead and we could copy this over but it needs to be mirrored over to the other side. So I'm going to use my mirror tool instead and make sure that this is set to copy. And we might even set it to instance because if we make a change to one, we might want it to make a change to the others. So either way, we'll be fine. You also want to make sure that you have the right direction set. So um, I believe we want this set to X. So we'll hit OK. And then I'll just move that over into position. Now it looks like it didn't, um, it didn't copy over correctly. It looks like it went the wrong way. So let's do mirror. Now let's do Y. 
Now let's move that over. It's still backwards there. I'm not exactly sure which way it's mirroring. Let's try this one more time. Let's do mirror. And let's set that to copy. And let's see, that's the wrong way. Let's do Y. And I believe it's X. And it's actually set to local. So let's go to view. Let's delete that one. And we have multiples right on top of one another. That's why. So now let's hit uh, mirror. And let's go to X. And there we go. That's the right one. Uh, also, your reference coordinate system might have something to do with that as well. So uh, just be careful of that. To push that in to where it's penetrating with the flap here. That looks good. And then I'm also going to take these and I'm going to put these on the bottoms of these straps so that way they look like they have something they're hanging on to. So let's make a copy of that. Let's hold down shift and drag this down. And we can make it an instance. That's fine. And then now what I want to do is I want to uh, reset its rotation. So I can reset this very easily by going to my rotate tool and making sure that this is set to view. And let's set these values. So I'm going to take this to zero. And also on my Z, I'm going to set that to zero as well. And you'll see that that flattens out. Now on my X direction, I'm going to type in 180 and that will flip around. And now I can move this into position much easier here for the bottom. So put that in position, pull that up. And then I can make any adjustments that I need to into my rotation. Let me turn off my rotate snap. Just kind of rotate that to where it fits right on there. Let's grab our move tool. Let me pull this over. Holding down shift. Pull this one down here. Those look pretty good. Just kind of modifying the overall positioning. And then also make sure that it's uh, penetrating with the rest of the image or the object. Great. Finally, we have these um, on the side and then also on the front. This one's fairly close. We just need to do some modification to the overall shape or the rotation. Excuse me. And then we'll take these and we'll pull those over. So I'm going to hit Z just to zoom in on that. Pull that up. And you'll see that this one is quite a bit larger. Now, I can go ahead and scale this um, and it not affect the others. So if I scale that down, not a big issue. It's only whenever I start to change the physical vertices. If I go into vertex mode, start to change it. Scaling it has no effect. Pull this over. I'm going to hit Z. Let's make sure that that is oriented properly. Might want to rotate it the other way a little bit. And great. So now we have all of our pieces there. We've got all of our buttons. It's all put together. And we finalized uh, this object. So now that we have uh, taken you through this project and we've taught you um, many different ways of polygon modeling, Hopefully, we've de demystified that term. Polygon modeling is not just about uh, starting out with a single polygon and extruding that out. It's more than that. It's not just a, a technique that can only be used in a specific way. It's working with polygons and getting the end result still being, being polygons. Um, the methods that we've talked about are used in polygon modeling and the methods that we talked about were edge extrusion to where we create um, geometry going in a specific direction creating edge flow and this edge flow is really convenient to get a specific amount of detail that we want out of our models now you're going to start to see your models beginning to ramp up in detail and um, and really just starting to become very exciting and in and in fact, I believe that they'll be even easier to work with because now you've got an arsenal of techniques that you can pull from to start creating really any shape that you can think of and any shape that you can see. So, for your final assignment, what I want you to do is I want you to um, do a Google image search. 
and I want you guys to find something like um, a duffel bag or something like that and I want you to use the same techniques that we had um, used in this course and I want you to uh, interpret those shapes and start to figure out um, the edge flow of that shape and start thinking about um, how all of that works, frame it out using this, uh, the cages that we talked about, creating those strips and then start to fill in the gaps and uh, creating any other details like straps and buckles and things like that using the same methods that we used here. So I hope you guys had fun in this course. I hope you've learned quite a bit about uh, polygon modeling techniques and um, we'll go ahead and we'll get started with the next level and I'll see you then.